Good morning, everyone. I am Niaz Ahmed, Master Student at Yongnam University, starting my presentation on automatic navigation and motion control of mobile robots based on ROS and LabVIEW. These are the features of the robot. Despite of the load carrying capacity, velocity, and mechanical features, the actuators of the robots is controlled with feedback, kick forward, and disturbance observer algorithm. And the most specific feature is the robot motion is controlled with artificial intelligence programmed with ROS. This is the hardware connection and data flow chart of the robot. Important thing to notice here is that there are three electric modules where ROS is running. First one is on the PC, which has a role of ROS master. Second one is Raspberry Pi, which is responsible for collecting all the sensors that are like uh, lighter camera and send it to the ROS master. And the third one is MyRio, which is responsible for low level control of the motors and collecting the velocity data from the encoders and send it to the ROS master. This is the block diagram of the control system where feed forward and feedback control are introduced to the plant along with uh, inverse date zone which will offset the starting input voltage. Then from the plant feedback loop, uh, from the plant feedback loop is connected to the to determine the error. Disturbance observer is introduced here with a Q filter which will correct the error of the system module. The forward and inverse kinematics of four wheels are shown on the left side. Now, the first question is what is automatic navigation? So navigation stack or ROS navigation system is a 2D method that will take some information like parametry, sensor data and your set goal position then output a save velocity command. So with that the robot will travel through the path. So in this uh, automatic navigation, maximum and minimum velocity of the robot are set and you can also control all of those. So what do you actually need to uh, command a successful automatic navigation? So for a successful automatic navigation, three types of data set are very compulsory. First of all is you need a mapping, then you have to make localization, and third, you have to make a trajectory so that it can travel through that path. You can also call it a path maker. And uh, I'm going to discuss about these topics details in next slides. So first of all, we are going for mapping. The in of, to talk about mapping, SLAM or uh, you can say simultaneous localization and mapping is a very popular method to make a map of uh, the unknown environment. SLAM is normally divided into uh, front and back end, where front end is responsible for uh, taking the processing the sensor data and turns them into an immediate response, maybe like find a landmark on your map or unknown environment. And back end takes the immediate representation as the initial data and platforms uh, initial data the for example how far the object is uh, how far any object is from the robot and back ends has three types of approach and uh, within that uh, ekf extended uh, kalman filter vertical filter and least square method which is also known as graph based optimization uh, are very popular as uh, in our uh, robot, we have used uh, the graph based optimization. I am going to explain about this method a little bit. Let's consider uh, the initial position of the robot is x0, y0. Then uh, the robot has traveled uh, to d distance and uh, in positive x direction. And so the new position will be x0 uh, plus d and y0. But uh, as you know, the automated data can be 100% correct, so the new position can be assumed with a Gaussian distribution, with which can follow the following formula. 
and now let's assume the robot is moving to uh, x0, x1, x2 and x3 positions calculated by the automated data and from a fixed landmark the positions are z0 to z3 so basically we have three constraints and those are initial uh, location constraint then relative motion constraint and relative measurement constraint so we are going to perform our mapping through uh, this constraint and these data sets and of course we have some errors and now i am going to show you how we are uh, we are going to optimize those errors and get a nice uh, map of those of the environment suppose uh, this is my robot and we have this room here which has one circle and a four boundary is just a one a rectangular so first when robot uh, will see the lighter it will uh, make one uh, dot it will give a data like this so next one if the robot has moved to this direction if uh, odometry and laser data is perfect then it can make the exact map of this environment but as you know the uh, odometry is not correct also the laser data is not correct so it obviously uh, with an error it will make a map so after traveling more and more inside the environment it will continuously uh, making some map uh, with uh, according to laser data but obviously it is not correct but what we have we have the assumption of these points as we uh, as we can calculate with this gaussian distribution and uh, we also have the assumption of uh, the environment through the laser data and as it is moving continuously uh, we are getting more data from the odometry and the map but at this point you can notice here the robot has come to its original position or you can say it has get a feature where it has started so this feature and this feature is same inside this environment this is obviously one unique feature so this feature is same so what i can do now i know that this data and this data are generated from the same position and we know this uh, this uh, distance so assuming these two map in same position we can pull the others data and make a perfect map of this environment so this is how we can perform one's uh, mapping next is the part for the localization in a world you have the map now you have to find your position within the map if you don't know that then the map is basically have no use so how we can perform that we can use several methods like extended Kalman filter monte carlo or mark within which monte carlo is the most popular one a monte carlo localization is a particle filter based localization method assume an environment where you have four corners and a open space which can be considered as a pretty featureless first we are going to distribute uh, 50 particles in uh, random positions and direction now our lidar sensor can sense a straight path which has a fixed distance from the robot from this we can assume that the robot is not obviously located on any of the four corners or on the open space so we can redistribute those 50 particles on these lines next uh, the robot has traveled further which will find a corner on its left then traveling further it will find another corner and turning into anti clockwise direction uh, it will find another corner so uh, we will continue redistributing the particles uh, with more 
accurate, accurate position, uh, possible positions and finally when we have arrived on the open space we can be assured of the robot position because there is only one way where the robot can find two corners standing in clockwise uh, direction and then open uh, and then find the open space and uh, please remember we are uh, we were talking about uh, an almost featureless environment in here robot can uh, find more and more unique features which can be set as landmarks and find its location maybe just turn it only one six, uh, 360 degrees and uh, this is one example of uh, localization where I have used uh, thousands of particles and uh, the number of the particles can be reduced if, you, uh, if we are more accurate about our robot position. Uh, this reducing uh, particles is also called adaptive Monte Carlo localization or AMCL. Now as we know the loca uh, location of the robot which will be uh, our starting point and of course we uh, will have a goal point we have to make a safe path in between also we uh, have to set the maximum and minimum velocity and acceleration of the robot during following the path for uh, path generation there are two types of algorithm which uh, one of which is search based uh, preferred for a small area maybe like a room Another one is sample base, which can be used as uh, any used for any larger unknown environment. And uh, for uh, as we have uh, used the search based algorithm, which is also known as A star, uh, I'm going to explain about it. Uh, in this process, the whole map will be divided into thousands of pixels, and uh, say the start pixel and uh, goal pixel within the map then we will give each pixel a value like uh, for going up down left or right it will be just one for going to the corner it will be root two so multiplying it uh, with uh, 10 will make the numbers 10 and 14 uh, then there will be another value based on a uh, start and goal point the left side one is the distance of uh, that particular pixel from the starting point and right one is the distance of the pixel from the goal point so adding these two numbers will make 14 plus 28 equal to 42 now our goal is to make a path where the total sum of the pixel value will be the minimum like uh, here 42 is the smallest pixel value around the starting point so the first step will be 42 then uh, calculating the next layer we will find uh, here as well 42 is the smallest number so it will make a path like this of course this was the simplest example uh, without considering any obstacles but uh, the basic goal is to minimize the total sum of the pixel value and now i'm going to show you one real example of our robot first i'm going to set one goal point and this is the initial point and you can see the robot uh, the ai system has, has made one path to the starting point uh, and the goal point and the robot is just following that path You can see the robot with uh, our axis as well, the red with the positive x axis.
thank you everyone for your kind attention